I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Fractus. In this video we're talking about whipping cream and how long you can use it past expiration. I apologize for the noise that's going on in the kitchen right now. We're doing a lot of different things. We're canning tomatoes. That's what the, we're going to be pulling out of there in a little bit. We're uh, baking bread in, the, in a bit. And the reason we're using the whipping cream is we're also making a pumpkin pie. Now, uh, cream and dairy products, I'm, I've always been fairly skittish about them. They seem like the kind of thing where if they go bad, they go really bad. If you've ever smelled like rotting milk, it's, you know, it's not a great scene. So I'm always really nervous about them, but I've had several experiences with a whipping cream that's been in shelf-stable packages like this. And I want to share them with you because, uh, well, this whipping cream container, it's in a little Tetra pack, uh, it expired, uh, according to the expiration date on it, uh, last year, one year ago, or uh, 11 months ago. Um, it's still totally fine. Uh, at least this cream right here is still totally fine. The first time I started messing with cream that had been way past expiration date, I was really, really nervous about it. I looked up online, and online they would say, you know, it's probably good a couple of weeks past expiration date. You know, you wouldn't really want to go too much further past that. Uh, but as long as it doesn't smell like it's gone bad and it doesn't taste like it's gone bad, then it's good. Uh, at that point, I had like year old stuff. And I was thinking, well, geez, you know, online they said like I could maybe go a couple of weeks. But they also said as long as it tastes fine and it smells fine, then it's probably fine. So I went ahead and I used it anyway. I was making some whipped cream and I... I I uh, used it to make the whipped cream, it whipped up totally fine, and I uh, ate a little bit of it, and it didn't make my lips numb, <laughs> and then I ate a little bit more, and it didn't like ma start making my mouth tingle. I ate a little bit more, I never got an upset, upset stomach or anything like that. Now, clearly, when you are working with stuff that is past expiration date, uh, you know, you're taking your life into your own hands a little bit. So that said, there are a lot of things that you might find on the shelf that even before the expiration date has been reached, they, you know, they've got botulism or they've got, you know, some kind of uh, contamination in them. So, you know, whenever you're eating food, it's not 100% safe. Now, obviously, the longer the food is, uh, you know, I'm sorry, the older the food is, the higher the chances are that, you know, something has gone wrong with it. But in this video, what I want to do is relay my personal experiences. And on several occasions, I have used whipping cream that has been in one of these Tetra Pak containers, shelf stable, that I've kept in the refrigerator. And... It smells fine when I opened it. It tasted fine when I've opened it. I've used it and it hasn't been a problem. That doesn't guarantee that you'll never have a problem with it. But in terms of just collecting people's experiences so you can make your own choices, so much of what's out there is, uh, you know, it's trying to cover its own butt legally. You know, people don't want to ever say anything and have somebody get hurt from it. I don't want to say anything and have someone get hurt from it. So I'm reminding you right now what I'm saying may not 100% of the time go perfectly well. but. On many occasions, I've used this stuff, I've opened it up, smelled fine, tasted fine, and I've kind of slowly, uh, you know, tried it to make sure it didn't give me a stomach ache, didn't make me start throwing up, and I've never had a problem with it. I've never, uh, ever gotten sick from it. Now, whipped cream, obviously, you're not cooking it. We're going to be using this for the pumpkin, so, you know, there's an added level of safety. Uh, you know, because we're using it in a pumpkin pie, it's going to get cooked in with everything else. Uh, but, uh, you know, in my personal experience, even not cooking this stuff, as long as it doesn't smell bad, as long as it doesn't taste bad, I've never gotten sick. That doesn't mean you won't, but I want to share the experience with you. If you're ever in a situation where, you know, you have a lot of this stuff and, it's, you know, you're wondering whether to throw it out or whether you might be able to, you know, survive off of it, you might be able to. That doesn't, that's not a 100% guarantee, but I'm sharing my experience with you. I hope you find that helpful. I hope you know, this wasn't too, too crazy annoying. We're canning tomatoes in uh, just regular, these are old Tostitos salsa cans. I just took some tomatoes from the garden, shoved them into the, uh, the can here, or the jar, put the lid on, put it into the pressure cooker. I put the pressure cooker weight on for the highest possible setting. And I'm uh, cooking these things for one hour in here uh, at 250 degrees. The whole idea of a pressure cooker is that when you increase the pressure of an environment, water uh, doesn't boil until it gets to a higher temperature. And the, the same is actually uh, uh, true in reverse. 
when you reduce the pressure in an area, the boiling point of water goes down. In fact, when I pulled these things out, they'll keep technically boiling for quite a while, even when they're just, you know, they're lightly warm to the touch, but they're still boiling because the pressure inside of them is so low. So that's what you're doing when you're cooking something in a pressure cooker. It's not that the pressure is sterilizing anything. What the pressure does is that when you add more pressure, it increases the boiling point of the water. You're allowed, you're able to get the water hotter in here before it boils off. And uh, by getting the water hotter, you're killing off things like botulism spores. And that's why we're uh, pressure cooking it in there. If you ever do this yourself, I think technically you're only, you only need to do it for like a half an hour or 40 minutes, but I always like to just overkill things, make it a little extra safe. I run them for an hour, and we're running off of solar panels on a perfectly sunny day. It's use it or lose it, so I might as well use the extra power to get a little bit of extra uh, safety and security out of it. But if you're not super uh, concerned about your own safety, you might want to try uh, using uh, expired whipping cream as long as it tastes good and uh, doesn't smell bad. I've never had a problem with it, but that doesn't mean you won't. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.